In the swirling mists of the distant galaxy of Zenora, where the sky glittered with hues no human I had ever seen, the grand courtroom of the Empress was filled with alien dignitaries, shimmering in all shapes and forms. The courtroom was a colossal, otherworldly chamber, where walls seemed to breathe and pulsate with energy. Everything inside this chamber was alive in some way. The seats hummed, the chandeliers dripped light, and the banners floated like they were being teased by invisible fingers. At the center, sitting atop a crystalline throne, was the Empress of Zenora, Queen Valexia. Her shimmering lavender skin gleamed under the bioluminescent glow of the courtroom, and her silver eyes, both entrancing and terrifying, gleamed with ancient wisdom. Valexia's tentacle-like hair swayed lazily, each tendril moving as though it had a mind of its own. Her gown, made of something that looked like it was woven from liquid stars, seemed to dance around her figure without her moving a muscle. It was said that Valexia could make stars shiver with a flick of her wrist, but today she seemed distracted, bored even, until the human was brought before her. Standing awkwardly before the assembly was Max and Max Anders. Your average earthling. Well, as average as a guy who'd just been abducted and whisked across the galaxy by interdimensional pirates could be. Max's dark hair was disheveled, and his standard-issue spacesuit looked laughably out of place among the alien dignitaries, who were adorned in every manner of radiant, otherworldly finery. His eyes darted around the room, trying to find something, anything, familiar, but the only thing that was recognizable was the uncomfortable sensation of being severely out of his depth. Human, Valexia's voice echoed through the room, low and velvety, causing a collective shudder from the alien spectators. Her voice was the sound of temptation wrapped in doom. You stand accused of trespassing into the sacred lands of Zenora, a transgression punishable by... Wait, 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 hold on. Max raised a hand, his voice squeaking out before he could stop himself. I didn't trespass, okay? I was kidnapped. Some guys in a ship. I think they were pirates. Beam me up. I didn't exactly get a choice in the matter. Valexia arched a delicate, otherworldly brow. You claimed to be an innocent victim, then? Look, I was literally eating a burrito one minute, and the next thing I know, I'm on some spaceship being probed. Don't even ask where. And then, BM. Here I am, standing in front of, well, you. Max gestured to her with a sheepish grin. Which, you know, no offense, you're super intimidating and all, but I feel like we can work something out here. Valexia's lips twitched a sign, perhaps, that Max had managed to crack the stone-cold mask of the Empress, if only slightly. The courtroom, however, was abuzz with whispers. The sight of this earthling, unpolished and utterly clueless, standing before their queen like some kind of cosmic jester was both baffling and, oddly, entertaining. Your plea for mercy amuses me, Valexia said, her voice betraying a faint hint of curiosity. But there are other matters to discuss. You see, human, there is another crime you have unknowingly committed. Oh, great, Max sighed. What now? Did I, like, step on a sacred alien flower or something? Worse, she said, leaning forward, her silver eyes gleaming with mischief. You have unknowingly fallen in love with me. The room went silent. Max's heart skipped several beats before his brain caught up. Wait, wait, what? He stammered blinking rapidly. I fell in love with you? Indeed, Valexia purred, leaning back in her throne with a satisfied smile. As Empress, I am attuned to the desires of all beings who gaze upon me. It is a rare and most dangerous occurrence when a mortal from a primitive world such as yours dares to develop romantic feelings for one such as I. Max could feel his face turning beet red. Okay, whoa, whoa. Hold on. I mean, sure, you're gorgeous, but... I haven't even said anything remotely romantic. There's got to be some kind of cosmic mix-up here. The courtroom erupted into a flurry of hushed giggles and murmurs, as if the aliens present were in on a joke that Max hadn't quite grasped. Valexia's silver eyes danced with amusement. Humans are notoriously bad at hiding their desires, she said smoothly. Your heart rate, your pheromones, your body language, it all betrays you. And, in accordance with ancient Zenorian law, when a lesser being falls for the queen, they are subject to... Max's eyes widened. Subject to what? 
Exile? Execution? Please say exile. A smile that could only be described as devilish curled upon Valexia's lips. Bonding. Bonding? Max asked, half relieved, half petrified. That sounds okay-ish? Bonding. Valexia repeated with a sultry drawl. As in marriage. Max's jaw practically hit the floor. A marriage? Wait to you? There's gotta be some kind of, look, I'm not exactly husband material, and I think there are some cultural differences we haven't really. The queen's laugh echoed through the chamber, sending chills down Max's spine. Oh, you misunderstand, little human. Bonding is not simply marriage as you understand it. It is a merging of minds, of spirits, of essence. It is far more intimate than anything your kind could comprehend. Max gulped. And what if I, you know, don't want to get bonded? Valexia leaned forward again, her voice dripping with seduction. Ah, but you do, human. Your body tells me so. Your pulse quickens every time I speak. Your mind is drawn to me, whether you realize it or not. Maybe it's the atmosphere in here, Max muttered, feeling like he was stuck in the most bizarre nightmare. Do you guys pump in pheromones or something? At this, one of the alien dignitaries to the side, a gelatinous being named Grimblocks with a face that sort of slid around like melted cheese, spoke up. It is true, the atmosphere in the queen's chamber can be quite stimulating for lesser species. But love, oh no, that is all you. Max shot Grimblocks a look. Thanks, bud. Real helpful. Valexia's eyes twinkled as she rose from her throne, floating down effortlessly to Max's level, her presence overwhelming. So, Max and Anders, what will it be? Will you fight the inevitable? Or will you submit to the great honor of being bonded to me? The Queen of Zenora. Max swallowed hard, trying to find his voice. Okay, look, don't get me wrong. You're a really something. But I've kind of got a whole life back on Earth. You know, Netflix, Taco Tuesdays, try not to get fired. And bonding? It sounds intense. I mean, I'm not sure if I'm ready for that kind of commitment. Valexia's lips curved into a knowing smile. Ah, human hesitation. How quaint. Before Max could blink, she was standing inches from him, her tendrils of hair brushing his cheek. Her scent, something between wildflowers and electric storms, filled his senses, and for a moment, he forgot where he was, or who he was, or anything, really, besides the hypnotic gaze of the alien queen. And then she whispered, so softly only he could hear, but what if I told you that once bonded, you would never be the same? You would no longer be ordinary. Max felt the words sink into his mind like hooks. It wasn't just what she said, but how she said it. Like she already knew the answer. Like she already knew him better than he knew himself. Well, Max croaked. When you put it that way, Valexia smiled wider. The kind of smile that could topple planets. Excellent. And that was when Max realized that the things were about to get much more complicated than he'd bargained for Max stood there, trying to process the absurdity of the situation. He was apparently in love with an alien queen, and now she was talking about bonding, something that sounded suspiciously like a cosmic marriage he wasn't sure he could survive, let alone enjoy. Valexia, now standing closer than was comfortable, stared at him with those shimmering, otherworldly eyes, her presence pulling at something deep in his mind. The courtroom, still buzzing with whispers from the alien dignitaries, suddenly felt too small, too stifling. Max could feel his heart racing, not just because Valexia was terrifyingly gorgeous, but because she was dangerous in ways his earthly brain couldn't fully comprehend. So, he said trying to stall for time. Bonding. That's like a forever thing, right? Valexia gave a sultry smile like a cat playing with its prey. For as long as the stars burn, human, right? Max muttered, nervously scratching his neck. And what happens if I, you know, say no? A collective gasp echoed through the chamber. Apparently, declining a royal alien proposition was a serious faux pas. Valexia's expression didn't falter, but there was a dangerous gleam in her eyes. If you refuse, she began slowly, her voice dripping with a deadly sweetness. You will be returned to Earth. Max perked up. Okay, well, that doesn't sound too. She held up a finger. But, as punishment for rejecting my royal offer, I will ensure that no creature, 
sentient or otherwise, will ever find you attractive again. In any galaxy, you will be invisible to all forms of affection. Max's mouth went dry. Why you can do that? Valexia gave him a look that screamed. I can do things you can't even dream of, little earthling. Oh yes, a lifetime of loneliness, without the touch of another. Not even a houseplant would respond to you. Max's brain short-circuited for a moment. No houseplants? The stakes had just escalated to a level he wasn't emotionally prepared to handle. He opened his mouth to respond, but before he could come up with something halfway intelligent, another voice cut through the tense atmosphere. I object. Max spun around to see an alien stumbling through the crowd. He was tall, lanky, and vaguely humanoid with lime green skin and two extra arms that flailed dramatically as he entered the center of the court. His eyes were too big for his head, but his posture was that of someone with enough swagger to convince a room he belonged there. Max and Anders cannot be bonded to the queen, the newcomer declared, puffing out his chest. He has already spoken for. Max blinked. Uh, I am? Valexia's eyebrow shot up, but her voice remained steady. And who exactly are you? I am Zorkon, Galactic Legal Advisor for Interspecies Relations, the green-skinned alien said, with a flourish of his forearms. And according to Galactic Law Code 582b, no species may enter into a bonding agreement if said individual has already entered into a preliminary relationship contract with another sentient being. Max frowned. Wait, what? Preliminary relationship contract? With who? Zorkon turned dramatically, extending all four arms toward a shadowy figure lurking at the back of the courtroom. The figure stepped forward, and to Max's utter disbelief, it was an alien that looked suspiciously like a walking purple jellyfish in a floating tank of water. The creature's tentacles waved slowly, and its translucent head glowed faintly. Its voice, telepathic, Max realized with a start, spoke directly into his mind. Greetings, Max and Anders. I am Flubiana, of the Glubian race. We met last night at the Galactic Cantina. Max's jaw dropped. W8 what? We met where? Zorkon nodded solemnly. Indeed, Maxon. It appears you were unaware. But during your brief stay on the pirate ship before being brought here, you made a verbal agreement to engage in romantic relations with Flubiana. Max's head was spinning. I made a what? Valexia's eyes narrowed. Is this true, Max and Anders? Have you already given yourself to another? Flubiana's telepathic voice continued, sounding disturbingly affectionate. You expressed an interest in my bioluminescent appendages and said, I've never seen a jellyfish this attractive before. That, according to Glubian law, constitutes a romantic proposal. Max nearly collapsed on the spot. That, that was a compliment, not a proposal. I swear, I didn't mean... Zorkon raised his hands. Nevertheless, galactic law is clear. Max and Anders cannot be bonded to the queen, for he has already initiated a binding romantic agreement with Flubiana. Valexia's gaze darkened, her otherworldly beauty now tinged with icy fury. This is preposterous. No one steals a bonding candidate from me. Flubiana's tank began to glow brighter, her jellyfish-like body pulsing with color. I will not give up my chosen mate, even if he is unaware of his feelings for me. He finds my tentacles enchanting. Max threw up his hands. Can we please stop talking about the tentacles? This is getting out of hand. The court erupted in a chaos. Alien dignitaries bickering. While Max stood there, caught between a gorgeous alien queen and a jellyfish who apparently thought they were engaged. It felt like the galactic version of a bad soap opera, and he was the hapless fool stuck in the middle. Valexia, however, wasn't one to be outdone. With a snap of her fingers, the room fell silent, her eyes blazing with determination. Very well. We shall settle this matter in the ancient Zenorian way. Max gulped. Which is? Valexia's smile was wicked. A challenge of the heart. Flubiana and I will compete for your affection. And you, Max and Anders, will choose who shall claim you. Max's eyes widened in horror. W wait, I don't want it. But it was too late. The crowd roared in approval, and Valexia's alien attendants rushed forward to begin preparations. Flubiana's tank bubbled excitedly, her tentacles waving with newfound confidence. 
Max stood frozen, his mind spinning. He had somehow gone from being a guy who couldn't get a second date on Earth to being the prize in an intergalactic love duel between a terrifyingly hot alien queen and a glowing jellyfish. As Valexia and Flubiana squared off, the court was abuzz with excitement, and Max, feeling faint, could only think one thing. Man, I really miss Taco Tuesdays. Max stood in the center of the alien courtroom, his mind still trying to process the complete absurdity of the situation. A few hours ago, he'd been a regular guy with a burrito in hand. Now, he was the prize in an alien love duel between a queen who could vaporize planets and a jellyfish with romantic intentions. Not exactly a typical Wednesday. Valexia, towering over the crowd with her radiant, regal posture, threw him a sultry look that was both intimidating and seductive. Flubiana, glowing faintly in her tank, had a quieter presence, though her tentacles waved with an enthusiasm that made Max uneasy. He had no idea how he was supposed to get out of this without offending an entire species or two. The alien dignitaries in the courtroom were buzzing with excitement, their voices creating a chaotic hum that echoed off the pulsating walls. They clearly lived for this kind of drama and Max felt like the unfortunate star of their favorite galactic soap opera. Even Grimblox, the gelatinous alien who'd been silently observing, was jiggling with anticipation, his gooey form vibrating like a jello on a bumpy road. Valexia raised her hand, and the crowd fell silent. As is customary in the ancient Zenorian tradition of the challenge of the heart, she began, her voice smooth and commanding. The contenders must each prove their worthiness to claim the affections of the Chosen One. She gestured toward Max, who gave a weak, panicked smile. Flibiana's tank emitted a soft glow, her voice gently entering Max's mind. I will do whatever it takes to prove my love, Max and Anders. My bioluminescence shall shine for you alone. Max swallowed hard, not entirely sure how he felt about glowing for the rest of his life. Uh... Thanks, Flubiana, but... Valexia cut him off, her smile dangerously confident. First, we shall begin with the test of compatibility. Max and Anders, my dear human, you will ask us each a question of your choosing to determine how well we understand your primitive earthly desires. Max blinked. Wait a question? Like just ask? Valexia's eyes gleamed. Anything your heart desires. Flubiana's tank burbled encouragingly. Yes, Maxon. Ask, and I shall reveal my understanding of your wants, your needs, your dreams, asterisk, asterisk. Max scratched his head, trying to come up with a question that wouldn't lead to galactic-level disaster. Finally, he blurted out, Okay, uh, what's your idea of a perfect date? The room fell silent. Valexia and Flubiana exchanged glances, each of them interpreting the question in their own vastly different ways. Valexia, confident and poised, smiled seductively. Ah, a perfect date with me would begin with a feast in the sky gardens of Zenora, where the air is thick with the scent of crystalline flowers. We would dine on the finest cosmic delicacies, while the stars themselves twinkle just for us. Afterward, we would embark on a flight through the nebula falls, where the colors of the universe would cascade around us, and I would show you the wonders of the galaxy that no mortal has ever seen. And when the night grows dark, we would return to my chambers, where I would continue to entertain you. She finished with a sultry smirk. Max felt his knees go weak. Why, yeah, that sounds intense. Valexia grinned, pleased with herself. Then, all eyes turned to Flubiana. The jellyfish alien pulsed softly, her voice again slipping into Max's mind. My ideal date would involve a slow drift through the phosphorescent currents of the Clubian Ocean on my homeworld. We would merge in peaceful meditation, our energies aligning as we floated among the bioluminescent waves, our spirits entwined. There would be no need for words, only the gentle pulse of our thoughts, united in tranquility. Then, we would, asterisk asterisk, Max, now on the verge of a panic attack, waved his hands frantically. Okay, all right, got it. Both sound a romantic in their own, unique ways. He wasn't sure what scared him more. The idea of flying through a cosmic waterfall with Valexia or merging his soul with a glowing jellyfish. 
Grimblocks, the gelatinous alien, jiggled excitedly. Excellent responses both. The human is overwhelmed with choice. Overwhelmed is one word for it, Max muttered under his breath. Valexia crossed her arms, her glowing eyes still locked on him. What's next, Max and Anders? Another question, perhaps? Something more revealing? Max shifted uncomfortably. He needed to think of something, anything to stall for time. Then it hit him. Okay, how about this? What's your worst habit? You know, something that might drive me crazy if we were bonded. There was a pause. Valexia's confident expression faltered for just a second before she smiled again, this time with a little more restraint. Ah, a clever question, human. Very well. I suppose my worst habit, as you call it, is my, shall we say, possessiveness. When I claim something, it is mine. I do not share. Ever. She said the last word with a tone that made the entire room feel about 20 degrees colder. Max gulped. Possessiveness. Cool, cool. Totally fine. Flibiana's glow dimmed a little, as if considering the question deeply. I suppose my worst habit would be my overattachment to those I care about. When I bond with another being, I bond entirely. There is no separation, no distance. We are always together. She said it in a way that sounded peaceful. But the idea of being psychically linked to Flubiana 24-7 made Max's skin crawl. Valexia smirked. Sounds suffocating. It's not suffocating, Flubiana countered, a touch defensively. It's simply connectedness. Max tried to keep smiling, but his face twitched in fear. Right, okay. Possessiveness and clinginess. Good to know. Before he could ask another question, Valexia stepped forward, clearly done with playing games. Enough of this. I grow tired of these trivialities. There is only one way to truly win this human's heart. The final challenge shall be. But before she could finish, there was a loud crash from the back of the courtroom. Everyone turned in shock as another figure stumbled into the arena. This one wearing a shiny silver suit that looked like it had been made in the 1980s and forgotten in a closet somewhere. The newcomer adjusted his reflective visor and gave Max a huge, toothy grin. Max and Anders, there you are, buddy. I've been looking everywhere for you. Max blinked. Wait, who are you? The man dramatically flipped up his visor, revealing a face that was both ridiculously handsome and slightly unhinged. Name's Chad Blazer, intergalactic matchmaker extraordinaire. And I'm here to get you out of this mess, bro. Max blinked, his brain unable to process the new insanity that had just arrived. Intergalactic. What now? Chad grinned wider, strutting forward with the swagger of someone who knew exactly what they were doing, even if no one else did. Look, pal, you've got yourself caught in one hell of a love triangle, but lucky for you, I specialize in getting humans out of these tricky bonding situations. All part of the job? Valexia, her regal composure cracking, hissed. Who dares interrupt the queen of Zenora's court? Chad gave her a finger gun. Easy there, space queen. I'm here on official business. He flashed a holographic badge that read, Chad Blazer, professional wingman and matchmaker, certified across 12 star systems. Flubiana's tank bubbled in confusion. This, this is highly irregular. Chad winked at Max. Don't worry, bro. I've got a foolproof plan. Just follow my lead. Max, now completely overwhelmed glanced at Valexia and Flubiana, both of whom were glaring at Chad with suspicion, then back at the self-proclaimed matchmaker. I have no idea what's going on anymore. Chad threw an arm around Max's shoulders. Exactly. And that, my friend, is why you need me. Now let's get you out of this court and back to Earth before these ladies turn you into space dust. Max stared at him, both relieved and terrified. Please, God, yes. Let's do that. Chad Blazer's over-the-top grin and confident swagger didn't exactly inspire trust in Max. But at this point, any exit strategy sounded better than remaining the unwilling prize in an alien love triangle. Valexia's eyes narrowed dangerously, and the air around her seemed to crackle with energy. You think you can simply take him? She said, her voice dripping with menace. Do you forget who I am? Chad Blazer? I am Queen Valexia, ruler of Zenora, breaker of stars. Chad, utterly unfazed, adjusted his ridiculous silver suit, 
then threw up his hands in mock surrender. Whoa, whoa. Hold your cosmic horses there. Your majesty. I'm not here to start trouble. I'm just following protocol. You see, according to the Intergalactic Relationship Entanglement Code, Section 12b, any bonding challenge can be nullified if the human in question requests a trial of escape. Max blinked. Trial of escape? What's that? Chad turned to him with a wink. Oh, it's a little-known loophole. Think of it as the universe's version of a get-out-of-galactic-love-jail-free card. Basically, it gives you a chance to complete a series of challenges to earn your freedom. That way, no one's feelings get hurt, and you're not forced into a relationship with a glowing jellyfish or a space empress. Alexia's lip curled. The trial of escape? That's a coward's way out. Flibiana's tank bubbled. I, I must protest as well. I have already bonded with him, spiritually. The trial would be unfair to our connection. Chad shot Max a glance. It's up to you, pal. You can stay here, watch these two fight over your undying affection, or you can take your chances with the trial. Sure, the odds are slim and the challenges are borderline impossible, but hey, better than spending your life on a space honeymoon, right? Max looked from Valexia to Flubiana both of whom seemed less like potential love interests and more like cosmic black holes ready to swallow him whole. Yeah, I'll take the trial. Whatever that is, just please, get me out of here. The crowd gasped in unison, their collective alien mouths hanging open. Apparently, no one had ever voluntarily opted for the trial of escape. Chad clapped Max on the back. Good choice, my man. All right, everyone, you heard him. By invoking the trial of escape, Max and Anders has formally requested his freedom. Now, according to galactic law, we need three challenges, chosen by each party involved, to test his strength, wit, and most importantly, his romantic competency. Valexia stepped forward, her presence radiating power and beauty, though her eyes flashed with clear annoyance. Very well, human. If you wish to challenge fate, then I shall choose the first trial. She paused letting the room fall silent before declaring. You must face the beast of Troskar, nine in combat. Max's stomach dropped. I'm sorry, did you say beast? Like with teeth? Chad nodded thoughtfully. Yeah, that one's rough. The beast of Troskar, nine, is, uh, kind of famous for disemboweling challengers in under three minutes. But hey, you've got spirit, right? Max's face paled. Spirit isn't going to stop me from being eaten alive. Valexia's smirk deepened. We shall see. Next, Flibiana's tank drifted closer, her glowing form pulsing with what Max could only interpret as determination. For my challenge, she said, her telepathic voice slipping into his mind like a gentle wave, you must complete the bonding meditation of Glubian depths. It is a test of mental endurance, where your mind will merge with mine and you must withstand the intensity of our connection for a full solar cycle. Max blinked. Wait, you mean I'd be stuck in your head? For a whole day. Flibiana's tentacles swayed softly, almost lovingly. Indeed, together, our thoughts will intertwine, our emotions shared as one. The beauty of the experience is unparalleled. It will show whether we are truly meant to be. Max shuddered. He wasn't sure what was worse being torn apart by the beast of Troskar 9, or spending 24 hours trapped in the mind of a telepathic jellyfish who had declared her undying love for him. Chad gave a low whistle. Yikes. And I thought the first one was bad. You've got quite the gauntlet ahead of you, Maxon. Max was beginning to regret every decision that had led him to this moment. And the third challenge? He asked, though he wasn't sure his heart could take any more. Chad scratched his chin. Well, technically... The third challenge can be chosen by the human himself. Galactic law gives you the right to choose one task that you think will prove your worth. But, uh, no pressure or anything. Max stared blankly. Great. So I get to pick a challenge that might determine whether I live or end up as some alien's eternal cuddle toy. Valexia's voice cut through the tension. Choose wisely, Max and Anders. Your life depends on it. Max racked his brain trying to think of something, anything, that he could feasibly accomplish without getting himself killed. His mind drifted to the most basic of human talents, something he knew could level the playing field. He took a deep breath and announced, for the third challenge, 
I challenged Valexia and Flubiana to a dance-off. The courtroom erupted in a stunned silence. Even Chad looked surprised, his grin faltering. A dance-off? Seriously? Max nodded, feeling a tiny surge of confidence. That's right. A dance-off. Three rounds. Whoever wins the most rounds wins me. Valexia's mouth twitched into an incredulous smile. You expect me, Queen of Zenora, to engage in some earthling mating ritual involving rhythmic body movements. Max shrugged. You're the one who said I could pick. Flubiana's tank pulsed with confusion. I, I am not familiar with this dance-off, but I shall do whatever it takes to prove my devotion. Chad burst out laughing, slapping Max on the back. I gotta hand it to you, man. That's one way to flip the script. All right, dance off it is. Max nodded, trying to keep the wave of sheer panic at bay. He just sealed his fate with a cosmic dance battle, and there was no turning back now. Valexia crossed her arms, her eyes narrowing. Very well, human. If it is a dance off you wish, then I shall obliterate you on your own primitive stage. Flibiana, though still unsure, added, I shall flow as the waters of my homeworld flow, gracefully and with purpose. Chad grinned like a madman. This is going to be legendary. Max wiped the sweat from his brow, already imagining how ridiculous this was going to look. But at least, for once, he felt like the odds weren't entirely stacked against him. After all, how hard could it be to outdance a glowing jellyfish and a queen who'd probably never heard of the moonwalk? The first challenge was set. The dance-off of a lifetime was about to begin, and Max was either going to walk away free or become the universe's strangest love trophy. The entire courtroom seemed to vibrate with anticipation. Valexia's eyes were blazing. Flubiana's tank pulsed in rhythmic waves, and Chad Blazer was, as always, far too confident in the absurdity of what was about to happen. Max stood in the middle of the room, shifting nervously on his feet. A dance-off. He had just challenged an alien queen who could probably move mountains with a thought and a jellyfish with telepathic powers to a battle of moves. His confidence from earlier had waned, replaced with a growing sense of dread. Chad clapped his hands together, grinning like he was about to host the galaxy's weirdest game show. All right, people, welcome to the first ever intergalactic dance duel for love. His voice echoed around the courtroom, and the aliens surrounding the arena buzzed in excitement. Apparently, even they had never seen anything quite like this. Valexia stepped forward, her flowing gown shimmering as if made of pure stardust. Let us begin this ridiculous charade, human. I shall humor you, but know this. Once the dance-off is over, I will claim you as mine. She raised her hand, and suddenly, the lights dimmed. A low, pulsating beat began to thrum through the walls. An ancient Zenorian rhythm, deep and primal. Max blinked. Wait, you guys have music? Valexia smirked. We have everything, Max and Anders. Prepare yourself. And with that, she began to move. Max's eyes widened as Valexia took the center of the arena. Her movements were fluid yet sharp, every twist and turn of her body perfectly in sync with the pulsing beat. She moved with a regal grace, a combination of ballet and martial arts, her arms slicing through the air like blades. Every gesture was precise, deliberate, and utterly captivating. The crowd was mesmerized. Chad, watching from the sidelines, whistled. Not bad for a galactic queen. She's got some serious swagger. Max gulped. He was in trouble. Valexia finished with a dramatic flourish, the lights brightening around her as she struck a final pose. Her eyes locked on Max, your turn. Earthling, she said with a confident smirk. Show me what your primitive dance rituals are made of. Max stepped into the center of the arena, his heart pounding in his chest. He could feel every alien eye on him, including Valexia's, who was clearly expecting him to flounder. But something deep inside him stirred. Maybe it was the sheer ridiculousness of the situation, or maybe it was pure survival instinct. But Max suddenly felt a burst of determination. He raised his hands, nodded at Chad, and muttered, play something with a little funk. Chad's grin widened. You got it, bro. With a flick of his wrist, the ancient Zenorian beat faded replaced by something more familiar, 
a smooth, funky groove with a heavy bass line that could only belong to Earth's greatest contribution to the galaxy, disco. Max closed his eyes for a moment, letting the music take over. If he was going down, he was going down with style. And so, with the confidence of a man who had nothing left to lose, Max busted out his secret weapon, the moonwalk. The courtroom gasped as Max slid backward across the floor, his feet gliding effortlessly in time with the beat. Valexia's smirk faded slightly, her eyes narrowing as Max added a spin, followed by a ridiculous but surprisingly effective hip thrust. He could feel the energy of the room shift. The crowd of aliens, once skeptical, was now leaning forward in their seats, transfixed by his earthling moves. Chad cheered from the sidelines. That's it. Show him the power of groove, Maxon. Max wasn't done yet. He followed up the moonwalk with a series of dance moves that would have made any 80s dance floor proud. The running man, the robot, and even a quick attempt at breakdancing, though he almost pulled a muscle in the process. Still, the crowd was eating it up. He could see some of the aliens mimicking his moves, their strange limbs flailing in imitation. Max finished with a final spin and a smooth slide into a dramatic pose, arms outstretched, breathless, but triumphant. For a moment, the room was silent. Then, the crowd erupted in cheers, alien voices echoing off the walls as they hooted and hollered. Max blinked, a little stunned. They actually liked it? Valexia, to her credit, maintained her regal composure, though Max could see the tiniest flicker of surprise in her eyes. Impressive, she admitted, though her voice was tinged with reluctance. But it is not over yet. Flibiana floated forward, her tank glowing softly. Now it is my turn to prove my love, she said in her serene, telepathic voice. I shall show you the beauty of Glibian movements. Max had no idea what to expect as the lights dimmed again. The music shifted into something more ethereal, a slow, haunting melody that seemed to ripple through the air like a gentle wave. Flibiana's tentacles began to move, swirling gracefully inside her tank, each tendril flowing with the rhythm of the music. It was mesmerizing in its own right, like watching a delicate underwater ballet. As her tentacles twisted and swayed, the bioluminescence of her body created patterns in the air, casting soft, glowing shapes that shimmered and danced around her. It was almost hypnotic, the fluidity of her movements contrasting with the more structured dances of Alexia and Max. The aliens in the courtroom watched in quiet awe. Max, despite himself, was a little enchanted. There was something oddly beautiful about the way Flubiana moved, her body glowing softly in the dim light, her tentacles reaching out like ribbons in a gentle breeze. It was peaceful, almost soothing. When she finished, the room was quiet again, as if the entire crowd had been lulled into a trance. Then, slowly, the applause began, soft at first, then growing louder as the aliens acknowledged the elegance of Flubiana's performance. Max swallowed, feeling a knot form in his stomach. The jellyfish alien might have actually won that round. Chad, sensing his uncertainty, gave him a thumbs up. You're doing great, buddy, but it's all about the final round. Valexia, clearly determined not to be outdone, stepped forward. It seems the human has some skill, but I have not yet unleashed my full potential. She raised her arms, and suddenly, the room shifted. The walls began to ripple like liquid, and a strange energy filled the air. Max could feel it vibrating in his bones. Valexia's body began to glow with an intense light, as she started to move, this time faster, more powerful. Her dance was no longer just a performance. It was an expression of her raw, cosmic energy. She spun through the air, defying gravity, her body bending in ways that seemed impossible. With each step, the floor cracked beneath her, sending tremors through the room. Max's jaw dropped. She's, she's breaking the laws of physics. Chad grinned. Yeah, space queens tend to do that. Valexia's movements were a combination of deadly grace and overwhelming power, like watching a supernova in human form. Her final move was a leap into the air, her body surrounded by a halo of light as she descended, landing with such force that the ground itself shook. 
The crowd erupted into cheers once again, but this time, Max wasn't sure he could top it. Chad leaned in, whispering, All right, buddy, you gotta dig deep for this one. It's time for the finishing move. You got one shot. Make it count. Max took a deep breath. He knew what he had to do. There was only one thing that could possibly match the sheer absurdity of what Valexia had just pulled off. He glanced at Chad, nodded, and stepped back into the center of the arena. The music changed once more, this time to something classic, an earth song that had transcended time and space, staying alive by the Bee Gees. Max grinned, feeling the beat pulse through him. If there was one thing that could win this, it was the disco finger point. As the familiar beat kicked in, Max began to move, channeling every ounce of disco fever he could muster. He hit the iconic finger point, one hand in the air, hips swaying with the rhythm. The crowd went wild. He spun, he shimmied, and for the grand finale, he pulled off the most epic split anyone in the galaxy had ever seen. The room exploded into cheers and applause. Even Valexia seemed momentarily stunned. Chad was laughing, so hard he nearly fell over. That's it, Maxon. You nailed it. Max slowly rose from the split, breathing hard, his body aching in places he didn't know could ache. He turned to face Valexia and Flubiana, both of whom were watching him with unreadable expressions. Chad clapped his hands. All right, ladies and gentle aliens, it's time for the final judgment. Who will win the heart of Maxon Anders? Will it be Queen Valexia, with her cosmic power and deadly grace? Or will it be Flubiana, with her serene beauty and glowing elegance? Or has Maxon himself claimed victory with the power of disco? The crowd held its breath, waiting for the verdict. Valexia stepped forward, her eyes blazing. You have proven yourself surprisingly worthy, earthling. But the final choice is mine. Max gulped, his heart racing. And what's your decision? Valexia's lips curved into a slow, dangerous smile. I choose. But before she could finish, the courtroom doors burst open, and in strode a figure none of them had expected to see, a third contender in this wild, cosmic love story. Max's eyes widened. You gotta be kidding me. The doors to the courtroom swung open with a loud crash, causing everyone to whip around. A shadowy figure stood silhouetted in the doorway, backlit by the strange light of the Zenorian moons. The figure strode forward with slow, deliberate steps, and the crowd of aliens parted, whispering in shock and awe. Max squinted, trying to make out who, asterisk, asterisk, or what asterisk, asterisk, this new arrival was. But as the figure stepped into the light, his jaw dropped in disbelief. It was a woman, a human woman. She was dressed in an outfit that looked like it came straight out of a space opera, complete with a sleek, metallic jumpsuit and a cape that billowed dramatically behind her. Her hair was wild, electric blue, and her eyes gleamed with a mischievous spark. Valexia's eyes narrowed in suspicion. Who dares to interrupt the sacred trial of escape? The woman sauntered up to Max with the kind of confidence that could only belong to someone who had spent too much time in space bars. She tilted her head and smirked. Names Roxara Star, Galactic Bounty Hunter, Professional Heartbreaker, and she looked Max up and down with a grin. Apparently, your ex-girlfriend, Max's brain short-circuited. Rox, what the hell are you doing here? Roxara shrugged casually. I was in the neighborhood, heard through the cosmic grapevine that you were about to become an alien love slave, so I figured I'd swing by and crash the party. You know, for old time's sake, Chad's eyes lit up in recognition. Wait a minute, Roxara star? The Roxara star? I've heard of you. Didn't you once escape from a space prison guarded by 16-headed laser lizards? Roxara winked. Guilty as charged. Valexia's expression darkened. This is highly irregular. This woman is not part of the trial. She has no claim to Max and Anders. Roxara folded her arms, unfazed by the looming cosmic queen. Oh, I think I have plenty of claims, sweetheart. Max here, and I have a history. We've been through a lot together. Haven't we, Maxie? Max grimaced. Don't call me that. Roxara ignored him. Remember that time we crash-landed on the ice moon of Thraner and had to survive by cuddling in a half-broken escape pod for warmth? Valexia's eyes blazed with jealousy, 
and Max could feel the temperature in the room rising. You were cuddling with this, this human female? Valexia's voice dripped with disdain. Max held up his hands in defense. Look, it wasn't like that. It was freezing cold, and we were going to die. It was strictly for survival. Roxara grinned slyly. Sure, survival. I bet that's what you tell all the alien queens. Flubiana's tank bubbled ominously, her tentacles swirling with agitation. This complicates things, she said, her telepathic voice tinged with confusion. I thought I had bonded with Max and Anders on a spiritual level, but now it appears he has a prior connection. Max pinched the bridge of his nose. Oh God, this is getting out of hand. Chad, loving every second of the chaos, clapped his hands. Well, well, well. Looks like we got ourselves a plot twist. The ex-girlfriend enters the fray. This is going to make the decision a lot more interesting. Valexia glared at Roxara, her eyes glowing with cosmic fury. I do not care about your past with Maxon. You are irrelevant. He belongs to me now. Roxara rolled her eyes. Please. You think you could just claim him like a shiny new spaceship? Max is his own man. And besides, I've known him way longer than you have. Max groaned. This is not helping, Rox. Roxara smirked at him. Relax, Max. I'm just here to make sure you don't end up as some alien queen's trophy husband. Although, she raised an eyebrow and looked Valexia up and down. She's got good taste, I'll give her that. You've upgraded since I last saw you. Valexia's fists clenched at her sides, and Max could almost see the cosmic energy crackling around her. You insolent little... Before Valexia could finish her sentence, Flubiana floated forward, her glow pulsating with intensity. I will not allow this disruption to ruin our connection. If this human female believes she has a claim to Max and Anders, then she must prove it. Max's eyes widened. Wait, what? Prove it how? Chad's grin grew even wider. Oh, I like where this is going. Another challenge, perhaps? A showdown between the ex and the alien queens? Valexia sneered. I will gladly destroy this woman in any challenge she dares to propose. Roxara cracked her knuckles. Careful, Vel. I don't back down from a fight. I may not have cosmic powers, but I've got a few tricks up my sleeve. Max felt the situation spiraling completely out of control. Okay, seriously, can we not? I don't need you guys battling over me like some kind of a galactic prize. Chad wagged a finger. Too late, Maxon. This is getting good. Valexia stepped forward, her eyes locked on Roxara. Very well, human. Since you have intruded upon this sacred trial, you shall face me in one final contest. If you win, Max and Anders may go free. But if I win, he will be mine forever. Max's jaw dropped. Wait, what? That's not. Roxara interrupted him, her gaze locked on Valexia's. Deal. But I get to pick the contest. Valexia raised an eyebrow. Name your challenge. Roxara smirked, clearly loving the dramatic tension. It's simple. We'll have a classic showdown. Galactic laser tag. The room went dead silent. Max blinked. Laser tag? Like the game? Roxara nodded. Exactly. Three rounds free for all. Whoever racks up the most points wins. No cosmic powers, no fancy tricks. Just skill, strategy, and a good old-fashioned laser gun. Chad gasped. Oh man, I love laser tag. Valexia scoffed. This is absurd. A child's game? Roxara crossed her arms. Scared you'll lose, your majesty? Valexia's eyes blazed with determination. I do not lose. Max groaned. Oh God, this is really happening. And so, the stage was set. Max, his ex-girlfriend Roxara, the cosmic queen Valexia, and the telepathic jellyfish Flubiana were about to face off in the most epic game of laser tag the galaxy had ever seen. The fate of Max and Anders hung in the balance, and the only thing standing between him and an eternity as an alien love trophy was a plastic laser gun and whatever shred of dignity he had left. Chad clapped his hands together. All right, everyone, suit up. It's time for galactic laser tag. Let the best woman... Er, alien win? Max sighed deeply, wondering how his life had come to this. And somehow, in the back of his mind, he couldn't help but think, this might actually be fun. As the competitors suited up, the arena doors slid open, 
revealing a massive, neon-lit obstacle course with swirling fog and flashing lights. The game was about to begin. Max stood in the middle of the neon-lit battlefield, clutching his laser gun as the swirling fog wrapped around him like a sci-fi fever dream. The stakes, absurd as they were, couldn't be higher. Behind him was the towering form of Queen Valexia, cosmic power crackling in her fingertips despite the no powers rule. To his left, Flubiana floated ominously in her tank, her jellyfish-like tendrils pulsing with otherworldly grace. And directly in front of him, with her eyes gleaming with mischief and laser tag determination, stood Roxura Star, his ex-girlfriend and self-proclaimed galactic chaos magnet. Chad's voice echoed over the arena's intercom, overly enthusiastic as usual. All right, players, you got three rounds. First to score 50 hits wins it all. Remember, no powers, no fancy moves, and most importantly, no destroying the arena. Again, Valexia huffed impatiently. This is beneath me, she muttered under her breath, her eyes glowing with royal disdain. Max leaned toward her, trying to keep his nerves in check. Look, this might seem ridiculous, but laser tag is no joke. I've seen people get real competitive. Valexia's eyes flicked to him, a mixture of amusement and possessiveness swirling in them. When this is over, Max and Anders, you will be mine, and no amount of laser games will change that. Max swallowed hard. On the other side of the arena, Roxra was rolling her shoulders, doing mock stretches like she was about to run a marathon. Don't worry, Maxie. She called out, her voice full of cocky swagger. I'm about to save you, but again, you're welcome in advance. Max winced. This was going to be a mess. The fog thickened, and the lights dimmed, creating an otherworldly battleground. Chad's voice boomed again. Three, two, one, begin. Immediately, chaos erupted. Valexia sprinted forward with the grace of a celestial warrior, her laser gun flashing brightly as she fired precision shots at Flubiana's floating tank. Flubiana dodged with surprising agility, her tentacles whipping her gracefully through the fog, returning fire in glowing orbs of light. Meanwhile, Roxura charged ahead with the overconfidence of someone who'd been in too many space bar brawls. She slid behind a neon-lit barrier, firing wildly in every direction, hitting alien obstacles more often than her actual targets. Max, while well, Max just stood there. The whole scene was ridiculous. He was supposed to be fighting for his freedom, but he couldn't help but marvel at how absurd it all was. He had an alien queen and a glowing telepathic jellyfish fighting over him, while his ex, who should never have gotten this involved, was single-handedly turning this game into a galactic soap opera. Valexia and Roxura traded insults while dodging shots, the competition heating up as they both attempted to outdo each other in sheer bravado. You'll never win, Earthling, Valexia shouted, her royal pride flaring. Your skills are no match for a Zenorian queen. Roxura laughed, popping out from behind cover to hit Flubiana with a well-aimed shot. Sweetheart, I've taken down space pirates. Laser tag is a vacation for me. Max finally snapped out of his paralysis and dove behind a barricade as shots zipped past his head. He peeked out just in time to see Valexia leap into the air, performing an acrobatic flip that landed her directly in front of Roxura, who barely had time to react. Max's heart raced. This wasn't just about winning a game anymore. Valexia's cosmic competitive streak had kicked into full gear, and Roxura's ego wasn't going to back down either. Flubiana, ever the graceful competitor, floated silently through the fog, strategically shooting at both Valexia and Roxura whenever they let their guard down. Her calm, Almost serene presence in the chaos was unnerving. And for the first time, Max realized she might be the dark horse in this whole competition. Max and my darling, stay still so I can protect you. Valexia called out, dodging another round of laser fire. Maxi, stop hiding and cover me. Roxara yelled from behind a glowing tower. Max, heart thudding in his chest, did the only thing he could do in this situation. He ran. He zigzagged through the arena, dodging lasers and obstacles, trying to figure out a way to end this insanity without someone declaring themselves his cosmic owner. This is insane, he shouted, diving behind another barrier. Chad's voice echoed from above, clearly entertained by the chaos. 
Looks like we're getting close to a winner, folks. Valexia leads with 42 hits. Rocks are close behind with 38. And Flubiana. Well, she's doing surprisingly well at 35. Max peeked out from his hiding spot, just in time to see Valexia land a perfect shot on Roxara, sending her tumbling backward. That's it. Roxara growled, scrambling to her feet. No more Ms. Nice Bounty Hunter. Just when Max thought things couldn't get worse, he noticed something. Valexia was glowing brighter. Flibiana's tank was bubbling more intensely. Roxara's wild hair seemed to spark with energy. The competition was reaching critical mass and there was only one way it was going to end. Max leaped out of his cover and yelled at the top of his lungs, asterisk, asterisk, stop. Asterisk, asterisk, everything froze. Valexia halted mid-leap. Flibiana's tentacles paused, and Roxara lowered her laser gun, blinking in surprise. Max took a deep breath, standing in the middle of the arena like a madman. Look, I can't believe I'm saying this, but this whole thing is nuts. I mean, I've been laser tagged by my ex-girlfriend, a cosmic queen, and a telepathic jellyfish. We're fighting over a human who doesn't even know what he wants for breakfast most days. This has to end. The silence in the room was deafening. Valexia, Roxara, and Flubiana exchanged glances. Finally, Roxara broke the tension, a grin creeping across her face. He's got a point. Valexia let out a sigh her regal facade slipping just a little. It appears this trial has gone too far. Flibiana, her glow softening, nodded. Perhaps we allowed our competitive instincts to overshadow the true purpose of our bond. Max exhaled in relief. So, what now? Chad's voice, still overly excited, cut in. Well, according to the rules of galactic laser tag, if no clear winner is declared by round three, the decision falls to the human. Max blinked. Wait, what? Chad laughed. That's right, Maxon. You get to choose who you leave with. Max's stomach dropped. Of course it came down to him. The entire room watched, waiting for his answer. He looked at Valexia, who had fire and tenderness in her eyes. He looked at Flibiana, serene and calming, offering something entirely different. And then he looked at Roxara, grinning like she knew exactly how this would end. Max took a deep breath and said the only thing that made sense. You know what? I'm going to choose myself. The room went silent. Valexia blinked. Flibiana's tank bubbled in confusion. And Roxara actually looked stunned. I don't belong to anyone, Max continued. I appreciate the wild adventure. And trust me, it's been weirdly flattering. But I think I'm going to take some time to figure out what I actually want. Away from cosmic queens, telepathic jellyfish, and, uh... Exes who keep showing up unannounced. Chad was the first to laugh, clapping his hands. Well, folks, I guess that's it. Max and Anders has declared his independence. What a twist. Valexia's gaze softened, and she gave Max a small, almost respectful nod. You are more worthy than I thought, Max and Anders. Flibiana's glow shimmered softly. I wish you peace on your journey, Max and Anders. Perhaps our connection was never meant to be bound. Roxara gave him a wry smile, her eyes twinkling with amusement. Well, Maxie, I guess this means you're free. For now. But don't think I won't come back to crash your party again. Max smiled. I'd expect nothing less. With that, the lights of the arena dimmed, and the fog began to clear. Max, feeling a weight lift off his shoulders, turned and walked toward the exit, leaving behind the wildest cosmic love triangle, or square he could ever imagine. As he stepped out into the vastness of space, he felt strangely free. Chad called out after him, his voice fading into the distance. You're always welcome back, Maxon. Just remember, the galaxy's a big place, and the adventure's never over. Max grinned to himself, knowing that wherever he went next, it couldn't possibly top this. Or could it? With the stars stretching out before him, Max couldn't help but wonder what other crazy adventures the universe had in store. After all, this was only the beginning. And so, the human who once danced for an alien queen and dodged lasers from his ex walked into the unknown, ready for whatever the cosmos threw his way next. But for now, he was content with a little peace and quiet.